Hello and welcome to this presentation on ANSYS Workbench Mechanical in which we're going to look at the forces across a joint in a response spectrum analysis. Here's the project page and what's been set up is a static structural analysis that feeds information into a modal analysis and the modes are used to do a response spectrum analysis. Now the static structural run is not a necessity in order to do this. It was created simply to look at conventional measurement of force across a joint. Let's go to the mechanical interface and have a look at this model. First off, note that you can see the three systems. A structural run, followed by a modal analysis, followed by a response spectrum analysis. There are two bodies in here. One that's quite thin in the X direction, and a much bigger one. The model's been set up this way so that when we look at the force in the joint, we expect it to be very close to the force in this small body. And that's because, as you'll see in the structural run, we've put a fixed support here. And for the purpose of a structural test, we've put a force on the outer body. So we're expecting the force in the joint between the two bodies be the same as the applied force here and the same as the reaction back here. Let's have a look at the joint. There's one fixed joint between these two bodies. Let's go look at the structural model. There's the fixed support on the back of the small body. There's the force on the larger body. Here's our fixed joint. And Note that it has been set to fixed, perhaps the simplest of joints. This is one of the ways in which you can, in effect, bond together two bodies that have a substantial gap between them, rather than using multipoint constraint and a gigantic pinball radius. Sometimes this approach will be more satisfactory. This fixed support has been promoted to two remote points. The first one here is the reference side. You can see that the coordinate system's been centered on the face, on the small body. And over here, we see the mobile side of that joint. We've inserted an APDL commands object under the remote point on the reference side. And what we're doing in here, we're memorizing the node number. The remote point node number is equal to underscore n pilot. So we're remembering this in order to use it later on. There is a parameter in the APDL run of the model. There's no input argument. And something else. In recent versions of Workbench Mechanical, rather than put this APDL command in, you could get the pilot node or that joint in a parameter whose name you put in right here. So that's been available in more recent versions, and we don't need to use this command. We could just take my ref point and put that variable name in here. The only connection in the model is the joint between the two bodies. It's been set fixed in this case for simplicity. Let's go check that structural run. Here's our solution. Total deformation. Well, we're pushing the outer body, and if I animate it, you can see that it gets pushed down. Well, the body here distorts only slightly. And we put in a joint probe. We can see where we've put in a force of minus 123. The joint probe reacts with a force in the y direction of plus 123. It's exactly what you'd expect. If you like, you could go to the fixed support and drag that down. The solution area and extract that result, evaluate, and see here also that the reaction where we have fixed this is 123. So it's exactly what you'd expect. We've moved on into a modal analysis. It is pre-stressed. It doesn't make much difference that it's pre-stressed in a model this simple, where we don't have significant stress stiffening. Here are the modes of vibration, starting off at just over 18,000 for the first mode. Let's look at that first mode of vibration. 
and animate it. And you can see that it's vibrating with movement up and down. Other modes, you can see one moving this direction, the higher frequency. And then at much higher frequencies, we get more complex movements like this. And like this. So on. That modal analysis feeds the modes into a response spectrum run. And see the reference to which system right here. It says modal, and that's the environment above. We have just one input in this example, which is the response spectrum acceleration. That has been applied to all of the supports in this model. So it's going to go in where we have the fixed support right here. Now what we've done is have a very low amount of excitation except in a band going from 17,000 to 21,000 hertz. So if we go up and look at modal, there's the list of frequencies. That first one was 18,026. So if we come down here, the 18,000 is somewhere between the 17 and the 21, so it's receiving this level of excitation. That will stimulate that mode of vibration. Solve for a result. We'll get a directional deformation in Y. And if we look at total deformation, the number is similar. Now, if we look at the force reaction on that constraint at the back, on the boundary condition, we'll see a value of 0.426 newtons. If I go in here and try to find out what the force is in the joint, here's some APDL intended to do that. So set comma four comma one goes to the solution, which is the displacement solution or the response spectrum analysis. Then I select that node. I remembered it in the parameter, my ref point, done back here in the APDL command that I put in. I memorized the number of that node. I go down here, I select that node, and I perform the ANSYS command Fsum. And that's going to sum the loads on that node that's in the joint. And then I use Starget to find out the result of the Fsum command for the force in the Y direction. So it's a Starget command. And because I start the name with my underscore, the value will come out as a result right here, as a parameter that we could use in Workbench. And that number is 0 0.42501, which is slightly smaller than the reaction here, which is 0 0.42658, because, of course, there's a bit of mass in the small body. So this test shows a very similar result here at the joint, Slightly smaller than the result on the back face because of the extra mass that's being accelerated in this small body. What we can't do is insert a probe for the load on that joint. If we check probes up above, we can get force moment reaction, but that's at a constraint. There's no input for joint. It won't give us the value of the force in the joint. So the workaround has been to go to some APDL commands right here. Now, I've not found this in the documentation for ANSYS, so this will be a use-at-your-own-risk item. But you could see in this simple test that the forces were quite similar between what happens on the back face and what's being exerted across that joint. The joint which was put in right here uh, with its remote points promoted up here so that we can grab the number on the node in the joint. So there it is. And thank you for joining me.